I know Vercel is in the title, so you're probably expecting me to spend the next 10 minutes talking about hosting and all the drama associated with it, but actually that's not what we're going to talk about. If you want my two second take on it, I think Vercel is fine. I like it. I use it. It works really well. But if you don't want to use Vercel, you don't like serverless, there are tons of awesome options out there. Coolify, Railway, Render, uh, Koyeb, AWS Raw, all of these are great options. They work really, really well. I really don't have that strong of an opinion on it. Use what's best for you. But for today, what I want to talk about is actually going to be the stuff that Vercel has been pushing really hard kind of behind the scenes. I haven't seen it get a huge amount of limelight, but I think it will over time as more and more applications adopt this and that's the new generative AI UI stuff. So first and foremost, what is generative UI? This is kind of a made up term and this is all very, very new stuff. So the terms here are kind of murky. It's kind of a mess. But just for the sake of this video, whenever I talk about generative UI, what I'm talking about is this concept where we can have our traditional chat GPT LLM chatbot style interface. It can return real UI components, which we create to create a sort of hybrid user experience where you're communicating with your application via chat. Like in this example, we're saying, what is the weather in SF? Where instead of going through and just querying the LLM itself, it, the LLM will actually call functions which you define to give you these real components that are actually useful. And this is a very, very cool idea. So cool that I actually went through and built out a full application with this. I wanted to try it. When I first saw this, I'm like, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. This is, this feels like the future. We can communicate with our applications via text. We can just communicate back and forth. No more clunky UIs, no more any of this stuff. It felt very, very cool. And I think in a lot of use cases, it will be. But what I wanted to talk about today are the downsides of this and the problems that it has and why I don't think that a lot of applications need to just completely replace everything with this and why based on the user feedback I've gotten and also based on my own personal experience using this, I think we want to try and narrow the scope of where we're actually using these LLMs. This is not an anti AI video by any stretch of the imagination. I'll talk about later on a lot of the things that I'm currently working on that I think are really useful to do in here, but rather that we should kind of tone it down. And this whole idea of rebuilding all of our applications in a chat interface is probably not the greatest idea. And maybe that's not what they're advocating for It's probably not. It might've just been what I jumped into, but regardless, I feel like it's a very common thing that a lot of people are going to jump into. So I wanted to talk about why I don't think it's the best idea in the world. So getting into this, let me first show you how this actually works. When you're working with these like gen UI application type things, you'll get like a chat GPT interface like this, and you can just kind of communicate with it to work with it. So let's say, for example, I'm in my workout assistant I built here. Let's say, um, show me my current workouts info. And when I tell it to show me my current workouts info, it'll go through and load and it'll go through and it'll show me like, okay, I haven't saved this one. I was messing with it before. This is a debug instance here. And it'll just show me like, okay, this is what your workout currently is. This is what you've done. Basically, it'll just be a chatbot that responds with real components. And this is a pretty cool idea. And there are a lot of places where this is useful. The whole impetus of this project was... Um, when you're working with like weight trackers and stuff like that, one of the most annoying things you have to deal with is just the spreadsheets, having to go through and manually type out a spreadsheet with all this stuff and type in 135, type in 10. The whole idea of this from the beginning was just to be like, hey, I just did squat 315, 315 times eight. I just did that. It'll go through and load a bunch of stuff. It'll fetch it. And then um, <laughs> I have a footer bug in here, but that's okay. Um, so it'll go through, you can type in this query and then it'll give you back and then it will just know what that means. It'll tell you like, oh, did you just do this? And then when I hit save, it'll just actually save that to the workout. And that felt like a really cool way of actually interfacing with it. It's just talking back and forth with a personal assistant for the workout. I actually leaned more into this and created this workout view here where you can go in and actually see all of your current like sets, all of your current exercises in your workout. You can view like a detailed view in here and you have a much more limited context to just talk about this workout. So if I just wanted to say, okay, squat uh, three, let's just say squat 225 times eight or something like that, I can run that in there. It'll say adding set to the workout, it added the squat, and then it'll update up here to where I now can drop down this and you'll see my 225 times eight just got added to my sets. And this felt pretty good. This felt like a good place to use it. But the place where it didn't feel good to use it was in just the general application. This application didn't have a normal UI. And I thought like, oh, it'd be cool if you can just talk to it back and forth. If you want to manage your schedule, you would just be like, um, here, I'll refresh to clear this out. I could just be like, okay, let's go in here and say manage schedule. And then it'll go in here. It'll bring up my schedule manager. I can do my stuff in there. If I wanted to finish, um, finish my workout, I can go ahead and do that here. And it just kind of seemed like a cool way to do it 
on paper, but in reality, this ended up not actually being the best thing in the world. I think the best way to illustrate this is by actually drawing it out. So if we imagine right here, this is just a little diagram of what an actual website using this would be. Let's say over here I have, this is my front end UI. And then over here we have our um, just back end. So the way a traditional old application would work is within our UI here, we'd have a bunch of buttons and those buttons would map to functions on the back end. So let's say on our back end, we'll use a to-do app as an example. We have a create uh, to-do, we'll resize that real quick. We have an update to-do and we have a delete to do. Or in our normal UI would just map directly to one of these. We would have like a creation component or whatever, which have an input and a button, and that would map directly to this create to do. We would have a delete, which would map to this, an update, which map to this. It makes a lot of sense. It's very simple. But with this chat UI, it gets kind of weird because here's what ends up happening. So up here, let's just add in another thing and let's just call this GPT. So we'll have our GPT instance up here. And whenever we create something in our, whenever we want to actually work with one of these functions, we now have to go through chat, chat GPT. So what we'll do in here, so we'll start over here, we'll make a query and we'll say, um, maybe the user will say, I wanna create a new to-do. That will be written out here in the chat UI and then that will get sent up through GPT. Then GPT will map that correctly down to create to-do and that UI will get sent back down here. It makes sense, it works. But this gets kind of awkward and weird because the problem that the end users run into is this gets really confusing because normally the UI will tell you very clearly what you can do over here. But with these chat UIs, this is kind of abstracted and we'll just end up with like a bunch of random things floating off in the void. The, um, the workout assistant example I have in here, I think I have like 10 different functions that you can call in here. And a big piece of feedback I got from users is like, once I figured it out, it was cool, but it really sucked having to just kind of talk to it and wrangle it back and forth. And it just created this nasty friction layer of actually working with your application. So ultimately I kind of realized like, hey, this is probably not the best way to do it. And I think I'm actually gonna take this project and, and I wanna keep this piece of it because I've been using this myself and I really like it. I talked to my friends, had them use it, a couple of users. This works really well, this sort of very narrowly scoped piece that's basically solving the problem of cutting out the spreadsheet. But just for your basic UI stuff, it really doesn't make that much sense. And that's my the whole point of this video. When I was talking about Vercel's bad bet, what I was talking about is I think going through and just completely changing user interfaces to only work with chat and just throwing in chat because it's new and cool is not the move. I think you wanna be very narrow with how you define this and very clear with what the user can do because this confusion right here is really, really rough. So I think in the future, I don't know exactly how this is gonna get solved, but I do know that this kind of figuring out what you can do layer is gonna be one of the most important parts. Now, I wanna be clear in talking about this. I don't think that this is a bad thing to learn and a bad thing to play with. Apple just had their big WWDC event and talked about all the places where they're incorporating a lot of the Gen UI stuff, not Gen UI, the generative AI stuff and all that kind of thing into their application. And there's a lot of really useful things we can do in there. Already I'm working with the guys on ways to use a lot of this AI stuff in the back end to make, for example, this top companies page a lot better. But it's not gonna be with a chat interface. It's gonna be abstracting a lot of that away from the user and just kind of using it to show things to them. That's another concept I wanted to talk about in here. It's I've kind of gone back and forth on how I wanna put this. I've kind of just calling it like the burden of brain cells, which is something I've learned a lot about building apps and that kind of thing and making good user experiences is where I as a user don't actually like having to think that hard when I'm using my application. And in this exam and in the and in this example right here, I have to do a lot of thinking and a lot of work just to do basic stuff. It's really nice when the actual when it's really nice when the application kind of just spoon feeds me exactly what I want to do. A great example of this is algorithms on social media. A lot of people like to complain about them and yeah they do have their issues but be honest with yourself, where did you find this video? Did you find this video in your subscriptions tab or did you find it on your home page, which is algorithmically generated? It feels really nice as a user to kind of just have it do the work for us. We want to put the impetus we want to put the impetus of actually coming up with the useful content, not on the user, but on the actual application. And that's what I think we need to figure out how to use these LLMs to do. We need to create experiences which will remove friction from the user, not add friction to the user. And that's my whole point here. I think this is still a very useful thing to learn. I put out a full tutorial on how to build AI applications like this earlier this week. I highly recommend if you want to get into this like bleeding edge AI tech type stuff, you go check that out and watch that. We'll go through and build out an example simpler than this, but it does 
does the same thing. And I think understanding how this works and how to do this is super important. But what I'm going to be working on right now is trying to do this in a more custom way. I'm going to be working with this in Svelkit and really trying to figure out with like insider biz and stuff like this, how can we take this really cool new technology and all these different ways of doing things and just send data to the user, not make the user try and get data from us, if that makes any sense. I know this was kind of rambly and kind of went all over the place, but hopefully you get the picture here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.